and welcome back for chapter five project planning scope and work breakdown structure so we're into the project planning phase this time around we're going to look at scope we're going to look at breakdown structure and how those play now i would remind you that as we look at this we are focused on an IT project. However, a lot of these tools and techniques work in any business project, okay? So the idea of governance for any business project, uh, planning any business project, doing a work breakdown structure for any business project can be important. So keep that in mind. Keep in mind that as you learn these things, you become valuable to your organization, even if the project doesn't include information technology. So this time around, we'll look at the relationship between scope and schedule and budget. Of course, everything plays together. Everything has to play together. We'll look at how to uh, create a work breakdown structure, how to break that down into individual packages. We'll look at milestones and the importance of milestones not just from a celebration standpoint, but what it really means to be a milestone, okay? It's not just reaching that outcome in that project package or in a, a group of project packages, but knowing that our governance committee or whoever is independent is gonna sign up off on this. That can be our customer, of course, and customer, remember, does not apply to external entities of a business but also our internal customers. So who we're doing the project for, okay? Several project estimation methods we'll look at and definitely the ones that don't apply. Now I've given you an example here of a Gantt chart so we can look at a project scope, okay? So we can look and see that some of these items need to be done sequentially and some can be done concurrently. Okay, now of course we can limit a, the project timeline of a project by doing as many things concurrently as we can, but sometimes there's just certain things that have to be done sequentially within a project, okay? And that, of course, is gonna increase the project time. But certain things like we need to go ahead and buy software, get software licenses, install products either in a cloud um, server or in a localized server within our organization before we can move forward. So of course, you know, there may be a wait time of a couple weeks to get that server, get it installed, etc. Now, of course, everything comes back to the MOV and support of the MOV. Okay, so work breakdown structure, project management tool that provides hierarchical structure. Now, we're talking about a lot of documentation. Here, we're talking about taking that documentation, putting it in a graphic form, which makes it easier to read, especially for people who aren't on the project team. Whether we use a Gantt chart, we'll look at some other PERT CPM charts um, that we can use as well. So when we talk about balancing out a project's MOV, of course, it includes scope, it includes schedule, it includes budget. And anytime we change one of these, we impact the balance of the project. So notice the reverse, um, the reverse triangle. I'm hearing a backup beeper in my in my video. It's annoying the heck out of me. So let's move on. So consequently, if we change the scope, so let's say you know we get a a, a request for um, an added feature, for example, we've changed the scope. We have to make sure that we also look to change the schedule and or the budget to continue to keep our MOV in balance. Okay. When we don't, it gets out of balance, it's gonna fall, and our project may or may not fail, or just that project package that is not in balance, not in support of the MOV may fail. That doesn't mean the entire project's going to fail, okay? So scope management process, you know, plan scope management, define, document, 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 how the project and the project scope will be defined, verified, and changed if necessary. So again, change management is huge. Scope creep, we have to limit that scope creep. We have to control the scope. We have to validate it as it pertains to the work breakdown structure. Now, later on in this lecture series for chapter five, you know, we will talk about how to balance that and take it down to the functional primitive. Okay, so this is the idea of breaking that entire scope down into scope packages that include the most minute process or feature or functionality 
that we're going to want. So, you know, when we say we want a functionality of a database, well, hopefully you know enough about databases that that means breaking that down, you know, perhaps even down into tables and into processes that the database is going to incorporate and how that's going to be included into the whole software package, if you will. So collect requirements, you know, from the customer, the sponsor, the stakeholders, what is it it needs to do, making sure we have all of those. And again, the more we plan, the better we're going to be able to execute. Because if we just run right into the project here, that's where we're going to end up with a bunch of scope creep. Okay, so we have to define the scope in great detail you know so you notice here a detailed description of the product service or information system to be designed built and implemented implemented a detailed scope statement defines the work uh, that will and will not be part of the project so we also need to include the things that are not part of the project maybe there's data coming in and we already know or we've tested that we can get the data out of uh, older systems or supporting systems in order to get it into the new system and that's not going to be part of the project or maybe that is part of the project in that we need to do that work before we can move forward with the project in its entirety okay nice little um, graphic here for planning the scope collecting the requirements you know defining the scope creating the work down work breakdown structure, validating the scope, and of course, controlling that scope so that we don't end up with scope creep, okay? The decomposition or dividing of major products um, into project deliverables, i.e. the scope, again, focusing on that smallest piece. Validating means confirming the formal acceptance, how it plays into the MV MOV. This could be our governance structure, Okay, our project governance that signs off, it could be our stakeholders, it could be our customers, but someone besides the project team needs to say, yes, we agree, this work breakdown structure and this validation of the scope includes everything we expect from the get-go. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't accept changes. Because a lot of times we find that as we work on the project, our project team gets creative, we may limit the scope. We may say, you know what, this is outside of what we can do within the time limit, within the budget, etc. That may be a secondary project or a supporting project once we implement uh, our our project, if you will. You know, extending on our project, but it's not something we can do within our work breakdown structure. Or again, it may be something that we intend to include that is something that we should include, in which case, again, we go back to balancing the MOV and increasing the budget, increasing the time. Now, I want to warn you all of increasing the budget by adding human resources to a project. You know, there is an optimum number of team members that work on a project, and then each person that we add to that, the project becomes exponentially more difficult. Okay, we end up creating more communication uh, channels that need to be um, maintained, that need to be supportive of the project. So the more people we have, you know, that old, you know, too many cooks can spoil the broth. It, it, it really is true in the aspect of a project. So when we talk about managing the scope of the project, okay, this becomes, tends to be the primary function of the project manager okay is managing that scope but however it is never their decision to either reduce or extend the scope that needs to be done by the customer it needs to be done by the governance committee or a project committee that is not necessarily entailed in the project but is in fact the customer that would sign off on change Okay, so plan scope management, develop a scope management plan. How are we going to do that? You know, collect requirements, define the scope in detail, create the work breakdown structure. We'll talk about breaking that down into packages. You notice it says they're manageable work pra pra packages. Oh, it's too early in the morning. Validate scope. So formal acceptance of all the deliverables. 
you know, process for managing all scope changes. So that tends to be documentation. It tends to be an independent team from the project team because the project team, again, gets creative. That's part of their job. But we can't just say, okay, we'll add this, we'll add this, we'll add this and not make sure to balance the MOV. If we're going to add something, then the stakeholders need to realize that the project is going to increase in time. It may increase in expense. And it may mean that we need to include additional resources, whether they're technological, human resources, whatever, to meet that additional scope, um, you know, extension that, that we've approved for the project. But again, a lot of times those additional requests to increase the scope can be held until we implement the project, make sure it works, audit it, and then enhance it with those scope opportunities, if you will. So here, you know, kind of a fun little thing, work outside the project scope, we don't include it. We have a clear project boundary. Now, it doesn't mean that work outside of the scope isn't gonna impact the project, it very well may, but we're not gonna do it within the project. We probably should have done it before the project. We should know if it's going to um, be included in the project again, maybe data that we're not managing, that we're not making part of the project, but that we need within the project. Okay. Anything that's going to affect the project, though, should really be part of the project the technology, the human resources, etc., the MOV, all must all work again, must support the MOV. It's back to that whole principle of why are we doing the project? To somehow make money for the organization whether that's increase revenue or decrease expenses. And remember, expenses can be time, okay? So if we can reduce a business process by reducing its time, we're essentially making money for the customer, okay? Here's a quick example, a statement of work. I would suggest you go out, just Google out at Google statement of work, and you're gonna find some great examples of statement of work documents. Uh, there's even some in Word. This one, I just went into Microsoft Word and said statement of work. And here is a template that came up. It's a narrative description of the product, service, or information system as a whole. Okay. Then we tend to do these when we talk about packages and breaking this project down into manageable practices that might have milestones at the end. We're going to definitely want to do a narrative of each package. What is going to be delivered in that package? When is that package going to be delivered? What resources of our entire project team are needed for that package? Okay. Internal projects. This is tied to the business need, of course, external projects. This would include specifications, quantities. So if we're a consulting firm doing this, this is very different. If our customer is external from our organization, we need to you know, have completed a process where we've received a request for proposal. We've gone back and given them the information. They've given us a bid. They've accepted the bid. That means we've created a very detailed scope and work breakdown structure that we're expected to deliver so that we don't get into the habit of adding features and functionalities that uh, do not support the project. Okay, and that increase our budget outside of our customers' expectations. Okay, so we want to we want to be able to deliver externally what our customer expects, and that's the same thing internally. Okay, so just because it's an internal project should not change the structure. Definitely should not change the scope or how we manage scope creep, how we manage um, requests for extending the scope. Okay, so scope statement is another way to define the scope. Again, we do that uh, at the package level as well. So project objectives, you know, scope description, project requirement, project boundaries, what's included in the project, who's going to work in the project, project deliverables, project acceptance criteria. So an example of that is just because we create the product and it seems to work, the customer needs to accept it. Whether that's an internal customer in the marketing department because we're implementing a customer relationship management system or not, it doesn't matter. Really, we tend to tie that acceptance to the milestone. Okay, So just because we deliver a prototype 
doesn't mean the prototype is accepted. So the milestone is actually when the prototype is accepted, when the project package is accepted. Okay, so example of scope statements, go ahead, pause that, read that. That's enough for this thing. When we get back, we will focus more on scope from a product scope and project scope and go from there. Take care.